All right, let's look at two more concepts associated with rational functions um, from the most basic viewpoint. Okay, they are holes and slant asymptotes. So let's get back to this second example that I did in the first video where we were looking for vertical asymptotes. So as a quick reminder, what we did was we took our function and we factored it. So we got x plus 2, x plus 1 over x minus 5 times x plus 1. And then we canceled the common factors from the numerator and denominator. And then we said, OK, whichever x still makes the denominator 0, so whichever x makes the new denominator 0, which is x equals 5, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. But since, one, since negative 1 makes the original denominator 0, okay, so if you look at x squared minus 4x minus 5, which is x minus 5 times x plus 1, that's going to be equal to 0 if x equals 5 or x equals negative 1. So what does that mean? It means neither of these numbers is in the domain of my function. So that means something is happening at negative 1. So since x plus 1 canceled, negative 1 no longer makes this function's denominator 0. So there's not a vertical asymptote at negative 1. What's actually happening is which x, whichever x value sort of cancels out, you have a hole there. OK, so I'll show you in a little bit how you find the y-coordinate of the hole. But again, um, whichever x value cancels out, which no longer makes the denominator 0, you have a hole there. So I'm going to add a part 3 to the steps for identifying vertical asymptotes. OK, so to continue, once we know what the vertical asymptotes are, we also want to know where we have holes. And the x values that make the original denominator 0, but not the new denominator 0, are where the graph has a hole. Okay, you can have multiple holes as well, just like you can have multiple vertical asymptotes. All right, let's do an example where we look for both. Okay, identify the vertical asymptotes and the x-coordinate where, so actually it only has one vertical asymptote, um, but, uh, and the x-coordinate where the graph has a hole. Okay, so here's my function. And follow those steps, uh, press pause, and work on this one. All right, so you should start by factoring the numerator and denominator. So the bottom will factor as x minus 4, x minus 1. So we see now that the x minus 1 cancels, and the x minus 4 does not. So what that means, since the x minus 4 does not cancel, it means we have a vertical asymptote there. Okay, You must write your asymptotes as equations. So you will write x equals 4. And now 1 makes the original denominator 0, but if I simplify this, I get x plus 1 over x minus 4. So 1 does not make this new denominator 0, but 1's not allowed. So you might remember back in 8th grade or 7th grade where they made you write down what the excluded value was. Um, so after you factored and canceled what could cancel, they wanted you to say, OK, well, um, yeah, this one is equal to this one, except since 1's not allowed here, 1's not allowed here. So except if x is equal to 1. Okay. So what is happening again? We do not have a vertical asymptote at 1. We have a hole at the point where x is 1. And to get the, the y-coordinate, we simply plug 1 into this simplified version. Okay, so again, to find the y-coordinate of the hole, plug 1 into the simplified version. So we get 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 4 equals 2 over negative 3, so negative 2 thirds. So our hole would actually be at the point 1 comma negative 2 thirds. 
So the graph of this original function here, the graph of this one, is going to look like as follows. All right, so here I've plotted the sort of skeleton of the graph. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And then when x is 1 and y is negative 2 thirds, we have a hole in the graph. We've got our y-intercept of negative a fourth, which we can just find, and our x-intercept of zero. Okay, so then we can just kind of ballpark fill in the rest of the graph. Uh, which you can do if you just plug it into the calculator or Desmos. But the thing is, the calculator and Desmos aren't going to tell you that there's a hole here. You have to know that there's a hole there. All right, so when they plot it, they're going to plot it without a hole. But if I ask you to plot it on paper, you have to plot it with the hole. OK, so this is ballpark what the graph would look like, again, if you plug it into your calculator. It's, it's going to be nice and smooth. It's just a little hard for me to draw on this screen. All right, just to make sure you have it down, find the vertical asymptote and holes for this rational function here. Press pause. Press pause while you work on it. All right, so the numerator is already, already reduced, so let's uh, factor the denominator. So the x equals 1 cancels. Sorry, the x minus 1 cancels. So we're left with 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so the graph is the same as the graph as, sorry, the graph is the same as the graph of y equals 1 over x plus 1, with the exception that x is not allowed to be 1 because it makes the original denominator 0. All right, so what does that mean? It means that we have a vertical asymptote whose equation is x equals negative 1 because it makes the new denominator 0. And we have a hole in the graph at the point where x is 1 because that 0 canceled out. And the y coordinate would be 1 over 1 plus 1, so 1 half. So why don't you, um, you know, just to, to convince yourself that there's a hole at the point 1, 1 half, why don't you plug this, graph this on your calculator. So graph, so convince yourself. So graph y equals x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Then do second calc value, and this is on your calculator. And then it's going to prompt you for x, so put x equals 1. It's going to tell you, it's going to indicate for you that there's no y value that goes with it. Okay? Um, but uh, that, so that means that there's a hole there. Okay? And furthermore, you know it's not a vertical asymptote because the function values aren't going up, 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 up to infinity or down, 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 down to negative infinity on either side, which is what you'll remember we said happens with a vertical asymptote. All right, the last thing that I want to look at is, as I said in the beginning, we're going to look at slant asymptotes. So you'll remember the conditions for finding horizontal asymptotes. So if you flip back at your notes a little bit, you're going to see that when the, you're going to be reminded that when the degree of the numerator was larger than the degree of the denominator, there was no horizontal asymptote. But something is, in fact, going on. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, so if you were to graph this function here, this rational function on Desmos, and again, we see that the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, so we know there's no horizontal asymptote from our discussion about that. But we see that, in fact, um, on the ends, so out here for big, big x and for x going toward negative infinity, we see that the function actually is following along a non-horizontal line. Okay? So in that case, when the end behavior or the function on the ends follows along a non-horizontal line, all 
When that happens, then the function has a slant asymptote. Okay, so the function has a slant asymptote. All right, let me make that clear. All right, but of course we want to know what the equation is. All right, what is the equation of that? Like we, we got, you know, when the horizontal asymptote was y equals 6, then we got y equals 6 was our equation. So how can we find the equation of the slant asymptote? And the answer to that is actually by doing the division algorithm on the given function. So the, uh, the equation will be y equals whatever the quotient is that you got. Okay, so let's do that for this one right here. So we're going to divide x squared minus 2 into x cubed plus 2x plus 2. We'll make sure we use a placeholder. Okay, so x squared times x gives us x cubed. So if you need to review this, you should go back you should go back and watch uh, uh, long division of polynomials. So we get x cubed plus 0x squared minus 2x. We subtract. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 0x zero squared minus 0x squared is 0. Then 2x minus a minus 2x is going to be 4x. Then plus 2. But remember, we actually don't care about, so this is this right here is our remainder. Okay, so um, the equation is just y equals whatever we get up here, y equals the, the quotient, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So for this function right here, the slant asymptote is the line y equals x. Again, so it's going to be what the graph follows on the extreme, extreme, extreme ends on the far, far right and the far, far left. Okay, so on the far, far right or the far, far left, if I could go there, the function would be following along the line y equals x. All right, let's do another one. And after we do the next one, I'll show you why you get to ignore everything um, besides the quotient. Okay, press pause while you work on this example here. All right, so we do our long division. So x squared times x, again, gives us up there. So we get x cubed plus 0x squared plus x. Subtract. Then we get x cubed minus x cubed is 0, 5x squared minus 0x squared will be 5x squared. Then plus x minus x. So um, that's 0, but we're going to have, so plus 0. We're going to drop down this plus 6. So I'm going to go ahead and make that be a placeholder of plus, zero, uh, plus 0x. So now x squared times 5 gives us 5x squared, so we'll put plus 5 up here. So we get 5x squared plus 0x plus 5, subtract, and we get 1 as our remainder. Okay, so that means that the equation of the slant asymptote is y equals x plus 5.
So if you were to graph the, if you were to graph uh, on Desmos, you get a nicer graph on Desmos. It's easier to see on your than on your calculator. If you were to graph this function on your calculator, and this uh, this line y equals x plus five, you're going to see precisely that this function is following along the line y equals x plus five. This uh, computer that I'm using is super super old and couldn't possibly handle Desmos. Otherwise, otherwise I would show it to you right now. Um, but you can do that on your own. All right. So so why why ignore the remainder? All right. So using uh, you know what we talked about in the division uh, case. So what, what this gave us is that our original function y is the same thing as x plus 5. So y equals x plus 5 plus the remainder, which is 1, over the divisor. Okay, so this is another way to write our given function. So when we're looking at the end behavior, so when we're looking at for horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes, x is going to infinity or negative infinity. And as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, this term right here is 1 over a huge, 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 huge number. So this here becomes insignificant, basically disappears out. For really, really big x. Big, big x. All right, so um, on the ends, so on the ends, on the far right and left ends, the graph very, 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 very closely resembles, I'm not going to write that out, but very, 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 very closely resembles the graph of y equals x plus 5. It is not the graph, because is, this is not 0, but it's very, very, very close to that. 